Hello everybody and welcome to episode 7 of the Get Your Flicks Out podcast. I am joined today by one of my longest serving friends. Um, we couldn't really decide on a proper intro to be honest. Uh, someone I've known since I was about 5 years old I believe. I think between you and Michael there's like 5 minutes that separate you in the in the distance of time that I've known you. So um, Joseph Croft, everybody. Hello. Hello. I'll be honest, I didn't really like the uh, longest serving. Yeah, I know. It's like you, you own me. Yeah, I mean, I kind of did. <laughs> we'll save that for the uh, to be that's for the after dark podcast. Um, so we're going to learn about the films that made you and uh, made you the person you are today. But before we get onto that, um, actually, before before I start, we used to go to the cinema quite often together. Uh, back back in the days where we had a, a Cine World Unlimited card. Correct. I uh, still got one. Have you, have you had one since? Is that the, still Continuous. the Continuous. So that's about, I'd say that's about nine years off the top of my head. And I've probably watched four films at the cinema in that time. <laughs> but I don't remember what it is. Well, I think we should go. I bet we've not been to the cinema together in a very long time. So I think we need to rectify that as soon as possible. So what? I can't remember is what what snacks are you going for at the cinema? What's your go to go to food item? Are we, items? Are we, are we talk, talking like large season here? Like, if just it's a, your normal go to, one of everything. <laughs> no, no. Um, not nowadays. I've turned. I, I, well, I can't say I've ever gone mad. Hmm. Um, I mean, as, as a kid growing up, uh, always took our own, snuck them in, even though I now know. There's no, like, you're not going to get arrested. No. It, it, it always made me laugh when I used to work there when you'd see kids, like, smuggling in, like they were smuggling drugs over the Mexican border or something. Yeah, mate, like, <laughs> always wear a jumper, big pockets. Yeah, bit really. like two-litre pop in there. <laughs> like, yeah, it's really funny. You must see people, and like, what what did they think? Like, yeah, this I'm just this odd shape. There's a bottle here. <laughs> I rustle just, everywhere. There's, like, different points coming out of you like a triangle yeah. Um yeah it's I think it varies on the company I know Odie and um, allow it but uh, the, my most recent job they didn't allow it they, they used to call them sneaky snacks <laughs> no sneaky snacks oh don't so, like that so uh, what is it you go for what's your what's your go to um, average see, so right I was thinking about this I am I'm, I don't like sweet stuff mm. sweet enough cringe Um I'm I'm quite a savoury kind of guy. Yeah. I like crisp. Oh yeah. So nachos is, oh, yeah. is the obvious choice. That's three in a row for nachos, isn't it? But if I'm being honest, mm. I make an exception on my sweet rule when it comes to popcorn. I do oh, like yeah. sweet popcorn. For a sweet popcorn. I do yeah. like a sweet popcorn. Okay. That'd be my go-to to be honest because you mentioned this in the last episode, the little golden nuggets. <sighs> that is what the Stranglers were singing about. Golden brown. <laughs> it's it's. When people talk about it's all about the little things in life, I think getting those clumps of crystallised sugar in your popcorn. Do you take a spoon with you and put it on and light it up and inject it? Yeah. Yes. Um. No, no. <laughs> see, see. Now, what, I'm, what I want to talk to you about with popcorn, though, is I do like a sweet popcorn. Why do other people that eat popcorn not have the etiquette to understand it is the noisiest thing to eat? Well, in the that's cinema? the thing about Cine Worlds of popcorn, especially because they do, they serve theirs in bags. Where I prefer a box. Oh yeah, I prefer, a bucket. Ask... I prefer a bucket, me, you know, <laughs> not a box, a bucket. <laughs> Truffle. As they do a really good deal, you can get like a big bucket for like a quid. Dogs barking there. Jesus. Don't matter. Woof, woof. <laughs> Just terrible owners, to be honest. So you're getting nachos. What depths do you go for? I'm going nachos. Um, I, I, were we talking here? Because the Cine World, I think it's two dips, but other places <laughs> you can get three. Yeah, Odin, a medium is one or a large is three. So we'll say we'll go for three. We're going three, mm. two cheese, one salsa. <laughs> the standard. Sorry, I just got PTSD. <laughs> the standard. Yeah. Uh, jalapenos. Yeah. Gotta have jalapenos. On top or on the side? On top. Some people, yeah. Do you have, would you have a dip on top as well? Some people like that, but why not? The full yeah, shebang. Yeah. Wow, you're going all that. That's I can't. That's three in a row for nachos now. That's really surprising. I didn't. So that, that's a tr- that is a treat. That that's, yeah. that's when I've I've not when I've I've had a good session in the gym or something like that. Yeah. I'm treating myself. Yeah, like maybe. Um, so I I I would say nachos, but I do like a sweet popcorn. Okay, and what drink do you go for? Um. As you mentioned, I've got a Cineworld card. Mm-hmm. Now, at Cineworld, it depends. If I go with my girlfriend, yeah, we can only really agree on 
the Pepsi. Do you share it? Pepsi Max. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if I'm on my own, I quite like the Pepsi Max cherry. Bold statement. See, I, it, maybe is that it's... served on the Postmix or is it a, like a bottle? Do they actually have yeah, that yeah, as a draft. dispense drink? Yeah. <laughs> draft. draft. <laughs> Pints of it. Have you ever had a beer in the cinema? A couple of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I quite enjoy that, you know. We found a we found a life hack once where <clears throat> apparently there was a secret menu at Odeon and uh, my friend Becky, she discovered that they do something called wine blasts. We can like mix a wine with your like get a white put a pinot in your uh, raspberry ice blast. Pints Change of, your life, mate. Pints of prosecco. Yeah. Again, don't tell. We're not talking about that. No, I, I, I've, I've a couple times partaken in a uh, alcoholic beverage, mm. and I've enjoyed that experience. Mm. Um, but as a standard fizzy drink, I, I prefer my orange flavours. Oh, the problem is correct. The, the sugar. Yeah. Is not good for you. No, of course not. And the sugar-free alternatives, you may as well not be drinking. It's mm. horrific. I hate them. <laughs> so, I'd probably go. Um, although sweetener is not the healthiest thing, Sparta yeah. and that. I'd, I'd go Pepsi Max Cherry if I had to pick one. Okay, that's uh, that's the first one. We've not had a Pepsi Max Cherry yet. Okay, so we're going for a large nachos with two cheese, one salsa, jalapenos, and a Pepsi Max Cherry on the treat. If I'm, I'm on the treat, if he's yeah. feeling naughty. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's your your meals sorted. Uh, Joseph Croft from Atherton. I always have to say where people are from for some reason. Um, what is the first film you remember seeing, whether that be at home or the cinema? Brought some notes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, the reason I've got this is because my memory's awful, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to sound... I'm going to sound... I know I'm going to sound like a knob end here. <laughs> but my concept of time is horrific. When, right. I, when, I, when I, I've been watching your other episodes and people talk about films and what years they came out yeah, and stuff yeah. I can't I can't do that right time doesn't exist to me <laughs> yes. not because I'm a, I'm an idiot yeah, yeah. Like, time is a human construct <laughs> I understand time mm. but I don't remember things right like in, in terms of a time scale time like, periods mm. I remember them more in emotions <laughs> right. so some of the earliest films I remember now you'll have to tell me which one of these came out first mm. But the earliest film I remember watching without my mum and dad, so going to the cinema with my friend, is probably Iron Man, and I went watching that with Michael. 2008. But yeah. prior to that, I remember watching Harry Potter because we went with school. Yeah, the first one. Yeah, I, I remember, remember that. remember Treasure Planet because I remember my sister loving it. Yeah, one of the most underrated Disney films. Cracking film. Yeah. yeah. Atlantis because I remember yeah. the... It was that sort of early 2000s Disney Atlantis, I, I love because they didn't perform very well at the box office, but I know uh, over time that uh, they've got this like huge, huge cult following. Um, but people are speaking about why don't they do a live action? Um, I think they said a remaster then, like a live action remake of Treasure Planet. That'd be sick. Yeah, like... no, I'd back that. I'd back that. <laughs> yeah, um, I remember watching Shrek with you at the cinema. Yeah, now I was gonna mention that, but I don't remember it. If I'm being honest. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. Sorry, lad. I cherish that memory, but. But yeah, I remember Atlantis because of the McDonald's Happy Meal toys. Right. I remember the submarine and playing with it in the bath. So this is early 2000s, so you would have been seven at this point. But when did the Pokemon movie come out? Because I remember 99, that. 99. So I remember that. So that's yeah. probably the earliest, because I remember the promo cards. So that's the earliest one you remember seeing in the cinema? Yeah, at home. Um, I asked my mum this today. <laughs> so what film did I watch a lot? She went, well, your brother watched... The Little Mermaid on repeat. <laughs> and I was like, way. <laughs> Loser. Yeah. And you watched Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> and you, lo- you love Cogsworth. Oh, I know what you're going to say now. I not remember me dressing up. Yeah, well so Book Day. when Well Book Day is... Um, I don't know if... Is it a common thing that other schools do? I don't know. Oh, that. Are, you, are you talking to like, for the American audience? <laughs> the three American... No, like, no I, I mean, I don't remember the like primary school is doing a world book day but in case you didn't that is there is a world book day and in our primary school you would have to come dressed up as a character from a book and every year you used to be the best one and i think it was in year two maybe you came as the clock from beauty and the beast and but in a giant cardboard like yeah. went full method so like, my mum and dad thought right 
we're not having him being bullied. This is time to shine here. <laughs> so some I don't know how, but they, they, they crafted this real good replica of Cogsworth out of cardboard. I just remember obviously they painted my face like the clock and it was my face in this cardboard box and the only thing I remember from that day is how uncomfortable it was in in, in the assembly. Yeah, you had to set, you had to get special treatment like you were some kind of disabled kid or something. Yeah, so <laughs> I waddled in with this cardboard box and you're supposed to sit on the floor, I think it was only were it only like year six? Yeah, I was just about to think that. Why is it that the kids used to get treated like homeless people and the year sixes got to sit on the bench? The bench, they got promoted. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's budget cuts or something where the kids had to sit on the floor, but that's just teaching us class differences from an early age, you know. <laughs> Instilling yeah, from but you, you, um, you and your is he called Cl- Cogsworth? Cogsworth, yeah. you had to sit. You got. I, couldn't, I couldn't sit down on the floor, so I remember him bringing in a chair. He's like a transformer. Well, a chair like this that we sat in, and they put me over the chair. I just remember being like this assembly face all squished, and then I couldn't get off the chair. Uh, so that was traumatic. Yeah. But yeah. And then you went as the Tin Man. The follow. I mean, yeah. we both went as the Tin Man. But yours again. You had the big cardboard transformer armor, and therefore was more superior to mine. I remember so. your Darth Vader. Oh yeah. It's funny. There's. I mean, there are Star Wars books, but when you think of books, you don't think of Star. Wars. I, I went as Austin Powers in Year Five. Yeah, I remember that as well. Yeah. <laughs> this, Reading Austin Powers. At, that is. The Austin Powers book. Is there an Austin Powers book? Probably. Um, and that's why you're now a top shagger. Yeah. To cut that out. <laughs> Fucking hell, what the fuck? Um, <laughs> what is... Uh, so you're saying Beauty and the Beast is the first film you saw at home and you're going maybe Pokemon. Yeah, Pokemon. but I do remember, and I remember watching this on repeat, Happy Gilmore. Mm. I had a triple box set mm. of VHS. Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison, Big Daddy. Solid trilogy there. No, I'm going to talk about... I want to talk about Adam Sandler a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's fine. You mentioned him before. Yeah, the golden years of Adam Sandler, yeah. Some of his films, I, I absolutely adore. I can get on board with Happy Gilmore. I like Happy, Happy Gilmore. Gilmore, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Now, I'm going to mention one a little bit later on, but I I, I think he just gets bundled in to being hated too much because he has done bad films. Yeah, 100%, awful. Yeah. 100%. But yeah. Happy Gilmore is, is a golden... Mm. We cherish class. Happy Gilmore. Um, I also didn't know that in Little Nicky that the blind guy is Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, did I tell you that? <laughs> yeah, but it came up on my YouTube uh, like search algorithm saying all Tarantino scenes in in uh, Little Nicky and I was like, I don't remember Tarantino. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's the blind light. <laughs> Preacher, yeah, yeah. Um, have you got a picture of you as Cogsworth anyway? Because if you do, I can put... I'll put, try and find, yeah. probably not. All oh, right, I'll try and find. Okay. Right, so Joseph Croft, what is... The last film that you saw. In full? <laughs> yeah. At home or at the cinema? Uh, b- both, if you right, want. Right, so we watched, me and my girlfriend, um, we put Magic Mike on last night. <laughs> I knew he was going to laugh at that. <laughs> hear me out, hear me out. Mm. It's because when we was driving home yesterday, or the day before, um, Backstreet Boys came on. Is it Backstreet Boys that we were singing before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And there's a, no. scene. <laughs> there's a scene in the second Magic Mike, which I have seen. Double XL or um, triple XL. And there's a funny scene in it, and it involves that song. So I was telling my girlfriend about it. Yeah. And she found, I said, play it on YouTube now. Uh, she found it funny. She said, I really want to watch it. Put it on, hated it. Um, the first one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, you can't go second and then first. first and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it on, she hated it, so we didn't watch it all the way through. Uh, so the last film I watched in full, at the cinema, was Black Widow the other day. I oh, did you? Yeah. What did you think? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really off superhero movies. Yeah. I think they need to really, really change up. Yeah, I've, I've thought this recently, that, um, that since, especially the MCU, because... I know it has a lot of fans, and, and it's even the most casual of movie fans, when you ask them what their favourite films are, they say the Marvel films. But I think that they've... It's run its they're, course they're, in, they're, they're in need of a reinvention, and that's why when Black Widow was announced, although it should have come out many years ago, I was excited at the prospect of maybe a more grounded spy thriller. And... It's it's okay. It um, hints at darkness, mm. and it should have explored I would have that li- far I, I more. would have liked it to have been an origin, like more of it yeah. focused on the origin instead of being a like 
oh, it's set during the end of Civil War. And well, I was like, why didn't you just release this at the end of Civil I War? I went, I went with Paul, mm. and he's not really that clued up on um, the MCU. Mm. He had no idea when it was set. He thought it was like, happening now, <laughs> like being live streamed. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think he realizes that. Spoilers: She's dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. So I, I I know he found that a bit difficult, but he's he's not an MCU fan. Um, but for me, I absolutely loved. I, I love uh, superhero movies. I, yeah. I do love the the Marvel films. But, yeah. Um, I just feel like it, it's run its course a little bit. Yeah, it needs some form of Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. Something a little bit different. That yeah. Because that changed Thor. Yeah. It went from Thor two, which I like, is yeah. probably the worst of the lot. Yeah. yeah. That it's why I'm, I'm I'm excited for Shang Chi when that comes out because that is going to be a, excuse me like a martial arts film set in the Marvel universe and it's why I'm excited for something like Blade when that comes back and stuff you know something a little bit different instead of just people in front of a green st- screen with explosions going off so it's an okay it's an okay film I, I, I genuinely think that they're going to suffer like I don't think the next few are going to perform that well at the box office like. I don't. Th- I think people are going to look at Shang Chi, and I could be wrong because of how well Black Panther did, with um, you know, with an, an African American cast, and people are going to look at Shang Chi with like an Asian cast and be sort of, and there's no like there's not really any mega stars in it either. I, I don't know if it's going to perform that well, but you could also say the same about Guardians of the Galaxy, which is a l- very at the time no one has heard of Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, like yeah, I'm a huge comic book yeah. fan, and even I'd never and you know and the the Eternals that's coming out later this year is that going to perform well but at the same time that's got the star power of like Angelina Jolie and stuff like that so I don't know um I think it's going to be an interesting few years for the MCU how to um how they're going to do post Captain America and Iron Man but I'm excited for Spider-Man so who knows so what was so Magic Mike as well touching on that um I've never seen it However, because I think the way they market it is like, look at all these men with the sexy bodies in the top. So that's why I watched it. <laughs> it's like that. That's how. And it was like, oh, girls' night out. We'll watch Magic Mike. But I've heard that it's like about drug addiction and yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, I, I didn't mind. If I'm being honest, we turned it off because my girlfriend didn't like it. Yeah. And I didn't want to admit. I and to it's about it's it. about these men who are doing it to like. You know, earn money to to help the finances. It's not all about like just men with the pecs out. It's, no. it's and that's because it, it's directed by Steven Soderbergh, who did like the oceans for oceans films and stuff like that. So uh, it's it's definitely on my watch list. But I think it it was it was marketed towards like just middle aged women <laughs> across the globe. So I I I'd, I'd give it a go. I want. I'm I'm probably gonna finish it off on my own. Mm. I'm not gonna tell her. Yeah, make sure no one walks in when you're watching that. Yeah. <laughs> because I don't like not watching films um, all the way through. I, mm. I, 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 it annoyed me that last night. I yeah. was uh, ready for. God's sake, mate! Scene. We just wanted to see the nude scene, <laughs> if, if there is one. Um, but I think the last film I watched at home all the way through was a film called Starred Up. Oh, with Jack O'Connell and Ben Mendelsohn in prison. Yes, yes. yes, yes. Not seen it, but I'm aware of it. Really enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's where he's in prison is his dad's in prison and they're in prison doing prison things. Prison. Yes. <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> yeah, that's on my watch list as well. I need to get more clued up on this. Jesus Christ. Um, okay. I'd, I'd definitely give that a watch. Yeah, start up. I'll put it on my watch list. Okay, so, <clears throat> Joseph, do you like being scared? Do you like being spooked? No. You I don't? Hate it. Do you? Do you, like, do, 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 do you not like scary films? Um... No, I, no. I'd, 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 as a genre, horror is probably my least go-to. Really, that surprised me. I thought you. I, so you scare easily. Do you scare easy? I'm. I think I'm good at pretending I'm not scared. Oh. Um, I don't like exploring it enough. Mm. I'll touch on in a second. I'll touch on what scares me more than the, or not scares me, but what what would bother me more. Unsettles you. Yeah, I, I think the. As a very gen- generic term, like horror, when you're talking about like monsters and ghosts and poltergeists mm. and stuff like that, it don't it don't it don't capture me. Yeah, because I don't truly believe in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So I know what you're gonna ask. What's the scariest film you've ever seen? So for me, and I don't want to give the same answers as pe- previous people in the podcast. For me, yeah. make me go to sinister. Yeah, because I think as a, as a stand up film, <laughs> just punch yourself in the ear. <laughs> Yeah, sinister. Poltergeist, mate. 
sinister, honestly. Yeah. Um, them just just for them little movies alone, mm. it's the subtle horror that, as you described it as. I think it's brilliant. I think the length of time they spend on them videos is right. The 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 soundtrack, the music to it. I think they nail it, but. Because that's already been mentioned on the pod before. Twice, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to throw in a bit of a curveball. Oh, my goodness. So the film itself, I wouldn't say scared me. Mm. The concept really unsettles me. Yeah. It follows. Oh, yeah. Sex demon. Not because, not the sex demon. <laughs> it's the idea, right? The idea of something that's following you. Yeah, and you, it's just... Constantly. Yeah. So have you ever heard, like... You know, um, life's toughest questions. One of them is like, would you take £10 million if there was like a deadly snail that was following you? <laughs> and, and if, if it, it touches touched you, you, you die. die. But it never stops following you. And it can overcome things. It can cross water. <laughs> <laughs> like, that scares me. Yeah. So the concept of that, I, it's a, I really enjoyed the film. Every second you're not running, it's only getting close. <laughs> yeah, imagine like looking out the window. I mean, like such a nice day, and why is that person walking towards me? Quite yeah. <laughs> aggressive. Yeah, <laughs> horrible. Um, I saw that film um, at Odeon. They, they do this thing called Screen Unseen, where you go into a film not knowing what it is. And I, I I'd seen posters for it, but had absolutely no idea what the film was about. And if you haven't seen it, because it, I, I th- it was an independent film, uh, it's absolutely sensational. It's 2014, I believe, and it's about a, a young girl who gets past a, a curse in which something's constantly follow, like something that can man- manifest a human being. It can either be someone she knows or doesn't know, and if it touches her, she'll die. And the only way you can pass it on is by getting dicked, <laughs> by uh, shagging someone. It's, but, a, it's a killer STD. Yeah, it? it's essentially uh, yeah a metaphor for an STD, a deadly <laughs> it's, it's sex like, germ following you. Yeah, it, it, it amorphosizes. Is, is that what it's called? It amorphosizes yeah. like chlamydia? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Um, and there's that scene where they're in the, it's, it's anthropomorphizes. The, it, it, I think that's what a word. word. What a word. It's the scene in which, um, the, you know, the really tall one that walks through the doorway. I'll yeah, put a clip. She locks herself in the door. Yeah, yeah, I'll put a clip into that. That fun fact is that that, that guy, um, the tall guy that that walks into the room, that is uh, one half of the world's tallest twins. The other being you. <laughs> yeah, he's like seven seven foot tall or something like that. Yeah, great film. Really great film. Um, yeah, if you and the, and another fun fact is when I saw it, it the soundtrack's a very sort of 70s, uh, like synthy, like synthesized soundtrack. And when I saw it, the fire alarm went off and we thought it was part of the soundtrack until there was just a dialogue scene and we were like... Until flames and golf could... doesn't... <laughs> you could, you know, like, there was just a dialogue scene you could still hear that... And we're like, I think... And then someone came in and was like, yeah, uh, everyone, you have to evacuate. And we were like, brilliant. So it kind of ruined the experience for me. A little bit off-piste. Um, you know my girlfriend, Tony? I do, yeah. Um, she texted me once watching the film. She's going to hate me saying this. Um... And she was like, I'm watching this film. I don't know the name of the film because I was too busy laughing. Um, and she says, it's a really good film. It's really, really enjoying it. The only problem is, is there's like this narrative over the top of it. I says, what do you mean? What? She said, it's just talking about anything that happens. I said, just do me a favour. Just check you've not got um, audio description on. <laughs> she hadn't realised yeah, the yeah. audio description was put on. She thought it was part of the film. She thought it was like this running narrative in the background. He's running through a field. Yeah. Yeah, my mum sometimes does that because we've got the, just, it's just one button on the remote that can turn it on and then you're just watching casualty and all of a sudden the man is receiving CPR. <laughs> she thought that was part of the film. <laughs> I've long in until she realised. I, th- I think she was two thirds. Oh, wow. Well, so least. pretty far then. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it follows. It follows. Can you see what I mean? It's not. It's not an out and out horror. Yeah. Yeah. But the concept the co- of it. Yeah. Horrible. Okay. Yeah. Horrible, mate. Horrible. Um, are you a crier? You don't strike me as someone who cries during the film, Joseph. I'm very emotional. Oh, yeah. oh, uh, no, I, I don't think, and it's not because I'm hard. Mm. Um, I don't think I've ever cried during a film. All right. Okay. You've well. You've got a bit. Emotion though. Lump in the throat. Mm. I'll tell you what gets me more is when something happens and it is upsetting and then I'm like, I won't say I'm holding it back, but 
I'll turn around to look at whoever's watching the film with me, and then when they're crying their eyes out, I'm thinking, oh god, oh and yeah, that's what gets me when other people I, are crying. Yeah, the, I had an ex-girlfriend, right? We won't mention her name, but um, <laughs> you can nearly yeah, hear yeah. <laughs> the microphone picks it up. She um, was literally one of the most like emotional people, like. If someone stubs their toe in a film, she'll start crying and stuff like that. And we watched, um, uh, I went round one night and me being the prick I am, I was like, what? Unbeknownst to me, I didn't know how emotional she was. And I was like, oh, let's watch uh, Requi- Requiem for a Dream, um, which is a film about like. That's the worst. What the- <laughs> Yeah, which is one of, them, their eyes out. <laughs> one of the most fucking depressing films ever made. And it's just the fact that uh, Ellen Bernstein's character who just is spending the whole film trying to lose weight so she can fit in this dress. And despite Jared Leto having his fucking arm amputated, despite Jennifer Connelly having to resort to prostitution <laughs> and using a double dildo in the ass. <laughs> um, uh, but people think that ruins the film. I think it really adds a nice ending. <laughs> and um, yeah, she was honestly, and for about it must have been about half an hour. Like she was in bit, and she was like, she just wanted to fit in the dress, and I was like, it's a fuck, like and it just just shut up. <laughs> like, These are the real issues that have not been talked about in Parliament. <laughs> Um, yeah, and another film, in the Babadook, where the, the, the monster kills the dog or whatever. And I remember, because um, she used to get up really early, I, I came down, more, it was about, honestly, it was about seven in the morning, she was watching the Babadook, and she was crying her out, I thought someone had died or something. And um, Never seen it. Have you not? No, no. It's got, I saw it in the cinema, but I've not seen it since. Um, but, yeah, she was, I was, yeah, the dog died, so I guess I should. <laughs> well... <laughs> Very professional of me to have a sheet here. On on this sheet of, of films that nearly made me cry, um, I put I Am Legend down oh. for for a similar reason. Right, it really upset me um, with with the dog. Yeah, and for that reason, I've not watched Marley and Me because I know what's coming. I, I reckon if, if I'd watched Marley and Me, the mm-hmm. answer would be yeah, Marley and Me. Mm-hmm. So I've not watched that, but. Um, Notebook, mate. No, I watched that, and, I, and Tony, Tony was like, I, "I don't cry at films, me." Mm. So I was like, "Just you wait." So I know the notebook gets me mum and dad. Yeah. So I thought I'm, I'll put this on, and at the end, um, right at the end, I thought oh, she's not cried once. Turned around, waterfall. Well, I, I lost, her, lost uh, weight from crying. She said, "What's up with you?" She's like, "I love you." It's like what? <laughs> Never seen it, you know. Never seen it. Uh, so okay. it just doesn't appeal to me. Just this epic romance film, not really for me. I I, I actually don't mind it for for what it is. Um, the ending gets a it's a bit cheesy, mm. and it lost me a bit. But yeah. I, I, it's okay. It's okay. But um, I tell you what, personally, get me the most uh, probably Disney Pixar films. Oh yeah, any in particular? Now Inside Out and Soul. This is what I was I was wanting to hint at in the horror question. What bothers me is is they give me existential crises. Like they really take you on a, a deep journey. Yeah. Soul, soul really like change your life. Yeah, oh, it, it made me think I need to sort my shit out. Yeah, Inside Out. It, it, my sister was telling me about uh, like in Inside Out when. You know when they're running across the islands, there's one where they go through a room and it's it's like a psychology thing and it's what they believe babies see. Mm. And it, I can't remember the term for it, but it's when like you turn into shapes and colours, they think that's what babies see. Yeah, it's yeah. really deep. And then when bing bong. Oh, no. oh, fucking hell. But the number one problem. Fucking hell. Problem. R.I.P. bing bong. Up. Oh, of course, yeah. You know yeah. why? Mm. It's the beginning. Yeah, just... Do you know what? For a, for a terrible um, corporation, Disney are. Uh, <laughs> they're a secret Nazi organisation. They can fucking hell, they can make some films, can't they? Like, <laughs> they can get those heartstrings. Mate, they've taught me a lot of life lessons mm. in films. Mm. And, and with Up, I think the thing that got me with that is it's straight away. And straight yeah, away. The, the the beautiful piano score as well. Yeah. Have you ever, one last one, have you ever seen The Kit Bull? The Kit Bull. It's a Pixar short. 
Oh, maybe then if it's so when I said when other people well up it gets me mm. I showed it to my dad <laughs> big now, Dane yeah. now your dad's supposed to be the role model in your life as a, as a, as a, as a, as a man yeah it's the person you look up to yeah I was like dad oh look at this you like Pixar because he does mm. he's trying to Pixar showed it him and it's it's it's, a, it's good it's only 8 minutes 10 minutes long mm. I can't remember how long it's not long it's a short mm. obviously <laughs> closing the name that got me dad bad <laughs> I remember him watching it and I was over his shoulder watching it with him I was like watch this and at the end of it I said what do you think and he couldn't speak because he knew he'd, he didn't he didn't want to cry in front of me and what are you thinking mm. <laughs> and I was like mm. and it got, that got me because I don't know it's when other people get emotional it yeah. really gets me but so, I'd, I'd, I'd recommend that as a shot what's, a your, what's your definitive answer then for a film that's upset you the most I'd probably go up he's going up okay he's oh. going up <laughs> See you later, bro. Okay, that's I, that's fine. That's a, that's a good enough answer for me. Um, okay, my two favourite questions coming up. What is a film that everybody dislikes, but you like? How long have we got? <laughs> so it's a film that people hate, but you're like, no, excuse me, I'll have you know. So one one you've already mentioned. Oh yeah, I'll start off with that one, Little Nicky. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just silly. It is really silly. I, I think that was sort of like Adam Sandler. He was just about he, like he was on the he's apex. Riding, he was on the apex of the roller coaster. He's still riding his wave of success. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think if I was to watch that as it came out now, mm, probably not. Awful, but <laughs> because I liked Happy Gilmore that much, mm. and I remember watching it with you and Michael. I think I watched it at yours for the first time. Yeah, and I can't believe you've never seen this. <laughs> and it's ridiculous, but it, I just enjoy it. Yeah. I, I, I'm a big fan of comedy films. Mm. Um, how I know a lot of people to like horror films is how I, I like comedy films. Yeah. It can be awful. I still <laughs> still like them. Not a lot of Adam Sandler films, but no. Nick is one. Yeah, I, I, can, get, yeah, I can get on board with. Um, I know it's one that you've mentioned a lot, Fast and Furious. <laughs> Which one? Oh, just the all whole. of them. <laughs> yeah. They're all terrible, but love them. <laughs> Yeah, really like the early ones. I really. I've only into ever them. seen. Uh, do you remember? Well, before we get onto that, I, I never saw the first one, and I remember the second one, Too Fast, Too Furious. Um, I remember in two thousand and three because I was close with my cousin growing up, and we used to go to the cinema a lot. A lot and I really, really wanted to watch the incredible, like the Hulk film, the Angley Hulk film with Eric Banner, and um, I was like super excited for it. And he was like, "No, I want to watch Cars and Tits." <laughs> I was like, no, I want to watch Big Green Man. <laughs> and he was like, no, I can't. And he was like, okay, we'll watch Two Fast Two Furious this week and we'll watch Hulk next week. Never fucking saw Hulk. Um, have you still not? Do you know what? I don't think I have. I don't think I have. I've, You've watched F9? I've watched... Do so you continue watching I, I, the Fast and Furious films? Oh, yeah, but yeah, never went back to the Hulk. No, I've, I've seen... I've not seen Tokyo Drift, which was going to be my next point. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. And it's not... Do not pin the blame on me here. It went to a vault... <laughs> This was a democ- uh, democratic I'm... vote, and I was outvoted. I wanted cars and tits. Yeah, <laughs> cars. <laughs> it was uh, the year is what two thousand and six, I believe, and it was your birthday, and we had a vote on what film to watch at the V Cinema at Middlebrook Retail Park. And it was between Fast and Furious, Tokyo Drift, and the wonderful animated film. Over the Hedge, <laughs> starring Bruce Willis, and um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think I could follow the overarching narrative of the Fast and Furious franchise, so we all went for Over the Hedge, and I've never looked back to be honest. <laughs> have you ever wa- have you rewatched it? I don't think I have. No, I've but, watched Tokyo Drift since, <laughs> but not Over the Awful, Hedge. Awful, but love it. Yeah, but, but not Over it. the Hedge. You watched that instead. I don't mind the Fast and Furious. I think um, I remember seeing a couple. We I think we saw five and six in the cinema together. Um, but have you seen the most recent one? No, no, no. I'll probably watch that soon. Please, as soon as you watch it, ring me up like the second the credits are over <laughs> during the film. <laughs> Mate, you can't believe that. <laughs> uh, any others? Um, now I was googling a couple and uh, some that were slammed by. Either critics or viewers or both. Seven pounds. Will Smith. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. I quite enjoyed that. Never seen it. Um, I, I actually quite enjoyed that, but I know it, it got slammed. Mm. Uh, Jumper. I, I googled this. That's a fucking great. I'll give you that one. I've been waiting for that to come up. 
I really liked it. <laughs> yeah. Now, I don't think it's because of the, the age I were. Mm. I, again, if I rewatch some of these films now, yeah, probably awful. <laughs> I saw that on a plane, um, and really because it's because um, it's, it's it's Anakin, isn't it? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hayden Christensen and Samuel Sammy Jack, <laughs> Samuel Jack, and yeah, just a man. And the fact that you can make a film about just a man who has the ability to teleport. Um, I think it's. I, I remember at the time being like, "Yo, this is, this is it." <laughs> yeah, no, I, I proper enjoyed it. Um, but I've since found out people don't, and they're wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the last one I'd say, but I mentioned this to you before. I remember going watching the Inbetweens movie and everyone hating it at the time. And I, I think that's because the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The second one is awful. No, the first one's shy, Yeah, I, I think is because. The TV program was so good, mm. and it's not as good as the TV program. But I still, I still really enjoyed the yeah. Inbetweeners movie. Mm. Uh, I just remember all my mates hating it, but I enjoyed that. I think it's fine. Um, I, I like the way it wraps up, and that's why I was so disappointed when it got a sequel. But it was always going to get a sequel because it made so much money. Um, I think it's this, to this day. I think it's the most. High, it's the highest grossing British comedy film. Um, but yeah, I, I hate the second one. I don't even remember. I, I know it opens up dressed as Harry Potter. Yeah, you, yeah they make it... Yeah, and they go shy. to Australia. Australia. Yeah. It's just shy. Um, have you got a definitive answer? or you just? I'd probably go Jumper, based yeah. on your reaction. <laughs> I'll give you that one. I love Jumper. Uh, <laughs> and in the opposite of that question, Joseph, is there a film that everybody likes, but you dislike? I feel like I've, I've I've wrote a lot down here, um, <laughs> and this is for every answer I've got a lot of films. Yeah. So running through them quite quickly. Mm, some dishonourable mentions. Go on. So bear with me with this. Mm. Not because I think it's bad, just right. because I know I need to rewatch it because I, I I've not took it in and I've not enjoyed it. Yeah. Harry Potter. The the whole the whole Harry Potter franchise. Yeah. I need to rewatch it. Yeah. So don't come after me. I probably would don't like at, it. Don't at him. <laughs> I'm an enigma. You'll not find me online. That's why you can't introduce me. <laughs> Got nothing to plug. Don't even know who you are. <laughs> uh, yeah, Harry Potter. Because I remember watching the first film and, and knowing that I should like it. Mm. I enjoyed the hype around it. Um, everyone bangs on about how good the books are. Even though J.K. Rowling is a horrible a person. terrible human being, yeah. Um, <laughs> I need to revisit it. I know yeah. I need to revisit it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I would like it. But for me... When people go on about it and people get tattoos of it and loads of like you know, like memorabilia of it. Mm. Just, I'm not a bit bought into it. Just simmer down. Yeah. Um in a similar vein, going on a Christmas film, Elf. <gasps> I've never loved My Elf. My mate Danny hates it as well. Don't hate don't hate it. Yeah. I just do not love it like yeah. most people do. That's a bold statement, that mate. That's one of the most controversial ones I think we've had so far. <laughs> but to to me, right, a Christmas film. For me, this is me personally, isn't Christmas themed. It's just a film I watch at Christmas. Mm. Yeah, I'm a bit like that with um, Stardust. And that's a film that I'd normally watch at Christmas. Yeah, so there's, there's, there's a handful of films I watch at Christmas. Mm. Some of them are Christmas themed, yeah. but that does not make it a Christmas, a Christmas film, film for yeah. me. Um, another couple that I know people banged on about, Star is Born. You don't like... <laughs> what? I don't mind the music. <laughs> Do you know, I think the thing with that is, is that I went when when it was when the trailer first came out, I was like, oh fucking hell, here we go. It's it's like this big epic sort of because it's it's like the fourth time that film's been remade, yeah. and it like when I saw, oh, it's Lady Gaga and it's Bradley Cooper, like is it, I thought it was going to be very. It's going to sound a bit disrespectful, but I thought it was going to be very camp. I thought it was maybe that's not the right way. Like over, target demographic, yes, not you, not us, yes, not straight <laughs> white. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought you know, similar, a bit similar to the Greatest Showman. The sort of very over. That's next on the list. <laughs> very sort of over extravagant. I thought it was, and and then I watched it, um, and I was like, and it's this man who has with with an alcohol addiction and. The music is fucking phenomenal, and like, I thought I fucking love it. I love a Star Is Born, mate. I tell you what, doesn't help watching it with my girlfriend who doesn't like anything. <laughs> she like, crap this. It really ruins the ambiance. You uh, should give it another go because I, I think it. 
and you know it, all the awards it got rightly so i think I, I i think it's more of the fact maybe the reason i enjoyed it so much is because of how low my expectations were but, yeah sometimes the best films yeah yeah I, I, the only other film i can think of that that affected me was well not affected me but uh it was despicable me too because I, I was again it was a sort of vote um between it was me and like twig and stuff like that watched it and like there was this vote and I wanted to see something else so I'm not watching Despicable Me 2 I've not seen the first one how can I follow the complex overarching narrative of Despicable Me and then I watched it and I thought that was the most that was the most fun I've had (laughs) oh yeah well it's probably more related to the last question but similar for me a a film I went in with very low expectations of and loved was Project X Mm. but that's mainly Mate, I had the greatest day. Oh, I remember of you telling me. Yeah, I remember you telling me. We watched that film, me, Twig, and Birchie, I think. Mm-hmm. I think it was the three of us. Um, and we planned to, after watching it, was like, yeah, let's go out and party. We ended up gate crashing some girl's 18th. <laughs> I remember, I think Birchie had uh, alcohol in a two litre bottle of Diet Coke. Yeah. I remember having an egg thrown at me, going towards Lee, someone threw an egg at me, mm. they were driving past, I think they were going 30, 40 miles an hour, this egg was thrown at me, it felt like a bullet, like a rubber bullet, didn't crack, yeah. I thought I were invincible, <laughs> went up Lee, met some Russian guy, yeah. craziest guy I've ever met in my life, I, like Hasbullah, if I'm being honest, like a tall Hasbullah, crazy, and he kept calling me John. I was rolling with it. Best night I've ever had. Yeah. So, 100%. Um, what were we talking about before that, before Project X? Uh, uh, Star is Born. Star is, yeah, yeah. And you mentioned Greatest Showman, yeah. which is also on the list. Mm. Um, another one, which I know people love, Baby Driver. <gasps> B-Tech Drive. <laughs> when you order Drive from Wish, you get Baby Driver. <laughs> I mean, I think... <laughs> You're wrong. No. You're so wrong. No. Because um, Drive is a very sort of artsy, serious film, whereas Baby Drive is that because it's made by Edgar Wright, who did the, you know, Shaun of the Dead and stuff like that. So it's that it's got that quirkiness to it, and I think it really works. But not for me. Really? Yeah, is mean, it because <laughs> Kevin Spacey is not... <laughs> the main guy is as well. Well, yeah, he's a bit dodgy, and Ansel Elgort. Or Elgort. Well, moving swiftly on. Sounds like a Star about... Wars villain. Stop talking about nonsense. <laughs> um, my number one would probably be the Armageddon. Yeah, I mean, that's not a critically acclaimed film. I think it's a lot of people guilty as pleasure, but you just think it's shit. The main, yes, but the main reason being, it's easier in this film to train an oil driller to be an astronaut mm. than it is to train an astronaut to dig. <laughs> no. Not in my books. It's been a very, very long time since I've seen it. Ben Affleck's in it, isn't he? Is he the one that gets blinded? I think I've watched it once. Yeah. Didn't take Didn't to like it. it. No, and I know a lot of people... Again, I don't, like I said, I don't think it's critically acclaimed, but I, I know a lot of people do. Michael Bay in it. Yeah. Uh, at least it's got that fucking absolute banger of an Aerosmith song, though, hasn't it? Yeah, no, I, I liked the song before I knew the film. Mm. And it's kind of detracted from the song a bit, because... Driller can become astronaut, but astronaut cannot become a driller. A driller in the sense of drilling holes, not yeah. like a rapper. Driller. driller. <laughs> uh, okay, so Armageddon. Okay. Uh, staying on a negative note, Joseph, what's the worst film you've ever seen? Okay, now I had a good long think about this. Mm. Now, um, the first one I'm going to mention is Mother. Right. But listen, 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 listen. <laughs> That's because I left the cinema not even confused. Mm. Confused and misunderstanding what had happened, it'd be on me. Yeah. But it's not that I misunderstood, I just didn't understand anything. I mean... Now, after reading up on it, I th- this, fantastic. Th- that's... that's <clears throat> I love the director so much. I directed Requiem for a Dream as well. and Because people... It, again, it was marketed as like a horror film, and then when you watch it, it's like no, it's it's all a metaphor about God and Mother Nature and stuff like that. But I don't think it's sort of like because I remember Mark from my band, he loves it, and like 
apologise. He's always Via ASMR. <laughs> he's always said like. Oh, if you don't like it, you just didn't get it. But I think that's a bit of an insult because, like, I don't think the the metaphor is it's not very subtle at all. Like, I think I need him my hand holding a little bit more mm. after knowing about it. Yeah, it's it's good. Yeah, and I think it's a fabulous performance from. In fact, I actually yeah. think it's Jennifer Lawrence's best performance. Uh, I think it's better than Silver Linings Playbook, which she won an Oscar for. But I think it's a banger film, mate. Absolute yeah. banger. So, so leaving the cinema and that, that 10 minutes before I got on my phone would have <laughs> yeah. been mother. Yeah. Because I weren't even like confused. I just, I was just like, what? Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I remember, and still to this day, no, I don't like it. And I've not revisited Golden Compass. Okay. Yeah. That was sort of that uh, period where everything was trying to be the next Harry Potter. Like, the, like films like Percy Jackson and. The Maze Runner, or The Hunger Games, which is probably one of the better examples. But yeah, that's the one with Nicole Kidman and Daniel Craig and some polar bears in it. Big polar bear. That's all I remember. <laughs> polar bear. I imagine there's a compass that's golden. Yeah. But, but yeah. Um, but more recently, um, Bill and Ted. The new, the newest one. Yeah, I watched that. Do you know in the split of the lockdowns in the in the UK for mm. American viewers. Um, <laughs> I remember being so excited to go back to the cinema and they enticed us with deals on cheap drinks and popcorn and all that. I remember just being so excited and we watched that. (laughs) And it just... Have you seen the original ones? No. No, okay. So maybe that's what didn't help. Yeah. It's silly. I've heard very very mixed things about it, to be honest. Silly comedy, which is is, is fine and I'm on board with them. Uh, I've said I like comedy films, but... um, Maybe I just weren't in the mood that day, at all. Sorry, Bill and Ted, if you're listening. Jesus. But we'll go with Golden Compass because Golden Compass, yeah. Polar bears. Yeah, polar bears and Nicole Kidman and James Bond. Okay. Um, on a more positive note, Joseph, what's your favourite animated film? Again, I don't want to repeat what people have said. You can repeat. Said. You can repeat anything you want. Right, mate. Okay. So the obvious one is to go to is, is your Disney's. Yeah. Hercules. Of course it is. It's the only right answer. <laughs> Love it, <laughs> yeah. Because I, I, I spoke about this um, when I did when I did my own. Is that like? Because it's not. It's it's actually critically not that well received. Do you know it's why about... my dad don't like it? Why he doesn't like the way they drew the chins? <laughs> Sorry, Dean, throwing you in the mud there. <laughs> What was wrong with the chins? Well, my dad's very good at drawing. It ends the cog. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh right, I didn't know that. Oh, do you know at school I was okay? At yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad is. Amazing. Did not know that at all. Yeah, so he don't like the animation style. Oh right, okay. Not that he's like an animation critic. Yeah, everyone's got like square heads, don't they? Yeah, he just couldn't get into the animation style. Oh right. Um, so I remember not watching it loads as a kid, but accompanying it with the game. I loved the game on PS One. Oh, yeah, banger. Um, I loved the soundtrack to it. I loved the TV program. Where Hercules is skinny. Oh, vaguely skinny remember. Hercules. Vaguely remember. Yeah. Um, I love. I just. I know you mentioned this uh, Greek mythology. Yeah. I'm a fan. Yeah, it's a masterpiece, mate. Like, I, I, I don't get the the sort of distaste towards it. I think it's. I, I think the songs alone are, are, are on top of some of the best Disney have ever done. I just don't. And because I, I always, every time I watch it back, I think, oh, I'm just watching it. Through nostalgic glasses, you know, Rose but every time, glasses, yeah, yeah, and every yeah. time I watch it, I'm like, no, this is actually a fucking great film. Yeah. Like, I, I love the performances, yeah. Hades, James Watts, yeah. villains. Yeah, yes. Yeah, just... What's your favorite Disney song, by the way? Is it Hercul- from Hercules? Yeah, of course it is. See, although I, Hercules is my favorite soundtrack as a whole, my favorite individual song is um, the one that Donny Osmond sings in Mulan. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have Donny Osmond. <laughs> Didn't move on. Banger. No, it's um, the one Meg sings. Uh, I won't say I'm in love. Yeah, with the uh, <sighs> the, the, the muses yeah, oh, backing her up. Who do you think you're kidding? He's the earth and heaven too. See, I quite like the uh, where he's on a journey. Yeah. I will find my way. I can go the distance. Yeah, banger. Absolute banger. No chance, no way. I won't say it, no. no. All of them, hero to zero. <laughs> hero to zero. <laughs> Mate, I love that. I'd, I really wanted, you know, how he becomes an icon in the yeah. film and he gets his own action figures. Yeah, yeah. And he drinks out of a, an, a, like a, a Greek column. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's yeah. the cup. The yeah, yeah. Cup. yeah, yeah. I wanted them so <sighs> bad. Fucking I don't even know if they existed in real life. Just, but what a film. But that that's you spoke about that, so I'm gonna have to come up with a different answer. Mm. Um I mean, big fan of Pixar. Mm. The obvious one's Toy Story for that. But the original, first yeah, one. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um I'm gonna say Space Jam. <gasps> really? Potentially. I mean, is it animated? There's animation, isn't it? <laughs> it's not who's cast for Bugs <laughs> Bunny lad. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll give you Space Jam. I'll give you Space Jam. Um, if you weren't going to give me that, I would have said Spider Man to Spider Verse. Oh, that's that. I'll give you that. But if I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you have Space Jam because around eighty five percent of it is animated. So yeah, it's I'll just give... fun. And I remember watching it. As a kid have you watched before. it recently? The new one? No, the the, the original. About a year ago. Do you I, still I just, like it? I, I struggled, but I think the nostalgia. Got yeah, me I didn't like it when I rewatched it, and a couple of hours ago, I just saw the new one, and it. It's probably a contender for one of the worst films I've seen this year, but there will be a review of that coming up. By the time this goes out, it'll already be change, up. But... Change the answer then. Spider-Man <laughs> is spider Man. That is a masterpiece. Yeah, it is. Like, cause, Everything about that. Yeah, and I can't wait for the sequel as well next year. So Anyone who's not watched that, even I, I think if people who I'm not into animated films, yeah, that was, give that a go. Yeah, because it, it, it didn't do that well. and it's, it's, the, it's the best Spider-Man film as well, Like even if you take into account the live-action ones, in my opinion. So, yeah, watch Into the Spider-Verse if you're not, because it'll change your life, to, you know, honestly. It's class. Okay, Joe. Last couple of questions. Objectively, Joseph from Atherton, what is the greatest film ever made? Well, James, also from Atherton, <laughs> from down the road. <laughs> yeah, you literally live one street away. <laughs> um, I struggle with this one a little bit. Mm. Um, I'm thinking of changing this question to be honest. Well, I, I think eventually you're going to get people running over the same answers. Yeah. Um, so if anyone's got any suggestions for new questions let me know <laughs> right so stay with me here right the two two that sprung to mind quite quickly uh, good fellas mm. and I'm going to butcher this <laughs> Les Untouchables which is the French film and I think it translates in English to Intouchables oh okay yeah it's but, yeah on further thinking, that's because I think that's what my dad's favourite film is and the French one's what my mum's favourite film is. Oh, right, okay. Um, it's about the quadriplegic, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It's about the some some French guy who's on benefits um, and, yeah, he's basically forced into working for his quadriplegic and it's the journey they go on. It, it, it's, it is a class yeah. film. They, they remade it. They remade it with Kevin Hart and uh, Brian Cranston. Yeah, I can't remember what it's called. It has a different name. Well, she tell me it's not Leo Untouchable. No, it's not even called what you just. What, what's I think it's Untouchables. It's yeah. got, I think I don't know if the French is, is the Untouchables, but I think it was in English Untouchables. Mm, maybe because is there a gangster film? Called yeah, the one with Kevin Costner and Sean so Connery. Yeah, it, it's Untouchables. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 I was thinking them too, but they're, they're more like my mum and dad. Mm. Like um, yeah. I don't. Is it too basic? Just, I, I don't know. Um, my, I'd, I'd, I'd stay with me again. I'm gonna say Batman, Dark Knight. Because That's fine. You can have that. It's too obvious, and I know there's there's criticism to be out of it, but I think you'd have to go quite far, the field, to find somebody who would say that's a bad film. Mm. I think it can capture younger audiences, yeah. older audiences. Mm. It's not like my dad. You'd lose my dad with fantasy. So mm. so I think Lord of the Rings is a lot better. Yeah. But I can understand why it loses people. Like yeah, my yeah. dad. It'd lose my dad because the fantasy element of it. Yeah. It'd lose someone like my friend Paul because it's too long. Mm-hmm. Dark Knight, I don't understand how anyone can turn around and say yeah. it's a bad yeah, film. I, I wouldn't trust anyone who doesn't like the Dark Knight, to be honest. I'll give you that one. Because I, th- I think it revolutionised comic. Like You could take comic book films seriously after that as well. Um, it's, it's got that serious element to it. it it's it's more believable. It's not. I, I don't even see it as a comic book film. To be honest, I see it as a crime drama, which just happens to have characters from comic books in it. But yeah, no, I agree with that, and that's what that's why I I'd, I'd say objectively. Although I don't think it's the best film ever. Mm. Um, I say I, I prefer a lot of the rings to it. Yeah, but I can okay. understand why that loses people. 
Um, I love Goodfellas. Mm. Um, and I know your criticism of uh, gangster films yeah. is they're all the same. But, but as fuck. <laughs> but that, that's not to say... Although they're similar, they're bad. It's a winning formula. Of course, yeah, I can I can see why people like them and I can admire the performances and stuff like that. But see, it's normally because they're all similar. It's probably the first one you watch is the one you probably like the most. And for me, that that is uh, Goodfellas. Mm. I've not seen Godfather. Neither I'm saving, are I, mate, so. saving it for a rainy day. Yeah, I'm the same. I've got all three. I've actually got them all on Blu-ray, the box set. But I'm saving. I'm saving it um, for a rainy day myself. To be honest. Let's watch. Let's watch them we watch together. It together. We'll have a nice romantic meet. Yeah, I think we should have. We'll order an Italian. <laughs> we'll all get some spaghetti. Ignore the fact the Beatles in the Euros. Yeah, right, fucking no. pricks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and we'll watch. Okay. Yeah, sounds like a it's a date. We'll watch the yeah, Godfather together. That. Yeah. Okay. Then we'll make sweet love afterwards. So, Joe, what's <laughs> what's um, what's your favourite film ever, Joe? Final question. Um, again, another difficult one. Um. So, I've already mentioned I like comedy films, and mm. I know comedy films aren't that great. They're not mm. deep. No, not anymore. Um, there are some. Again, sometimes I've watched them where I think I've watched them at the right time for me. Mm. Um, and there's a few that spring to mind. So, Forgetting Sarah Marshall is one of my favourites. That surprises me. That's the film I saw that with my mum in the cinema and I don't think you can show a clip of this no that that was the moment in which I thought maybe you should stop going to the cinema with your mum <laughs> with Jason Seagal's and... has he got a big knob I can't remember I uh, wouldn't say did, I wouldn't say no did to you do, did you do my I don't mean, I mean did you do my cock quiz <laughs> just to add a bit of concept there when we did when we were balls deep in lockdown and we did zoom quizzes I don't think you I, I did um Around about nude scenes in films, but I did. Yeah, but mate. I did. I did men only, and that was that was one of them. Yeah, I remember Orlando Bloom being in there. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, yeah, I saw it. <laughs> Got it saved on my phone, mate. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Screensaver. That, that surprises me. Forgetting Sir Marshall any anymore? Uh, from like the comedy category, super bad. Yeah, I can get on board with that. Yeah. Hangover. Hmm. Um, Mrs. Doubtfire. I like okay. Robin Williams. Yeah, how can you not? I love Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a film that my family love as well. Mm. I watch it all the time. We are. Um, what We Do in the Shadows. Oh, we're werewolves, not werewolves. So hard to get people on board with <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Great film. Yeah. It's a mockumentary. I need to add that onto my Blu ray collection, actually. No, I, 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 think, I, th- I think anyone should watch that because, yeah. again, um, talking about my dad, it, fantasy loses him. So. Mm. Dad, watch this. It's about vampires and werewolves. No, not for me. I'm not watching Twilight, son. What you're about. I was like, no, they don't sparkle. Uh, and and I think it's got rewatch value. Yeah, great film. So many things you missed the first time I watched mm. it. Um, brilliant. Like, yes, yeah, so genius. Um, and Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. It's, I can't. I'm going to butcher his name. Taika Waititi. Ta- Taika Waititi. Yeah. I think he's fantastic. Yeah, legend, Matt. Um, but moving away a little bit from um, comedies, because the, the comedy list goes on like Snatch, Four Lines. Mm. There's a lot of comedies I like, but moving away from them, um, some that stand out to me, I really like, and, and there's elements of comedy in it, Train Spotting. Okay, I'll give you that. Um, Drive, yeah. I do really like. Yeah. Not Baby Driver. No, I love Drive. Yeah. Uh, I, after watching that, I wanted to be Ryan Gosling. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seriously contemplated for years buying the jacket because you, you can, yeah, because I just, I, I, honestly, I've, I've come this close, I've come this close so many times to getting it, but I think only he can pull it off. To be honest, well, the, the closest thing I've got to that is I recently got for my birthday a vinyl, mm. like a limited edition Drive soundtrack. Vinyl, I've got it, the Splatter one. <sighs> That's yeah, tasty. That I've I've been I've been after the soundtrack for a while because they do like a neon pink one as well. But yeah, I, I might get that jacket one day. But Amazing there's probably soundtracks. there's probably a reason why I've never seen anyone else wear the jacket is because of the horrendous. They're not Ryan Gosling. 
it's that it's that so it's like a silver with a yellow scorpion on the back and i just don't think i'd i think people would look at me and think what a fucking virgin that guy is but why is ryan gosling boy at all i don't know because he's cool he's ryan gosling and he's not from yeah. otherton but weren't he picked for the notebook going back to notebook weren't he picked because he wasn't wasn't good looking enough yeah yeah, yeah. but look at him now prick <laughs> <laughs> Sick guy. I really wanted to be him after that film, but yeah. superb soundtrack. Yeah. You know, I think BBC Three uh, showed it and they rescored it. I've heard of this. I think yeah. Zane Lowe yeah. might have done it. Yeah, I yeah. didn't watch it because I thought the soundtrack was. Yeah, it's, it's impeccable. It yeah, yeah. Um, Whiplash. Oh, yeah. He's throwing out some bangers here. These Whiplash. are some of the best. Yeah. Love Whiplash, you yeah. know. Um, and then there's, there's there's two from a similar category, and I'd possibly say one of these. But looking back, I'm not sure. Um, Interstellar and The Martian, right? Now I know space films have Fuck been hell. overdone. Mm. Interstellar, I love right up until the last half an hour for me. Too cringy. It's it's when Matt Damon gets introduced in Interstellar that I feel it, it really loses its way. Up to then, I think it's a masterpiece. Yeah, it's but it's, it's the last... Martian a, a sequel. <laughs> or a prequel, yeah, maybe. Leave him on the moon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, we, we left him. <laughs> um, I, yeah, because I watched Interstellar in the cinema and I was like, oh, uh, I, I didn't really get on board with it. And I, I gave it another chance about a year ago. And I was like, oh my God, this is actually a masterpiece. But then it gets to the, that last sort of 25, 30 minutes and I'm like, it's sort of... I don't think it ruins the, the, the I hate the ending. The film. I hate the end. I think the ending's a, it's pathetic. I actually think it's pathetic. <laughs> not, not, yeah, but for me, not enough to ruin it. No. I wish did. I don't know what, but I wish they did something a little bit different, mm. a little bit less calm. That, that love is a, a, what is the word, quantifiable, that yeah. you can travel through space and time via love. Fuck off, mate. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's stupid. You're a man who don't believe love exists. I, I mean, probably not, but like <laughs> the fact that even if you, because there's a concept, like there's, a, there's always that sort of argument if um, it's love, because it, 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 I mean, scientifically, it's just a chemical in our brain, but then there are other people who believe it's this sort of physical emotion, but Christopher Nolan thinks you can travel through time. <laughs> you can travel, love can travel through time. Yeah. And not books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fucking stupid. I, I'm sorry, like I think Christopher Nolan's an absolute master, but it's something I'd expect to see in a Disney. You know what I mean? It's I just I, 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 it's so really... with, with a different ending though. I think if he just got back to Earth, I just really like <laughs> via the... a wormhole. I would have liked it a bit more, but I like the, just the, the epicness of traveling space and it's something that's always interested me. Mm. And the fact that time does change depending on where you are and yeah, the gravity yeah, yeah, yeah. and the sacrifices they made for it all and um, yeah just the ending killed it mm. but I, I think after that and the, the Martian because it's just it, that is great film funny great well. performance yeah um, there was a lot of space films churned out after that like gravity mm. it was fine but the, after them too yeah, I'm, I weren't really big on other space films, but mm. um, if I had to say one, uh, what would I go for, James? I don't know, mate. It's your favourite film, don't mind. Maybe Hangover. Really? Genuinely, because... That's it, I, a again, bold stem, isn't that? I think at the time, the age I were, just how much I rewatched it, and it just made me want to go to Vegas so yeah, much. I, mean, I saw it in Vegas as well. I don't know if you knew that. No, nope. no, yeah. So uh, we were in Vegas um, at the. Were you gambling? Yeah, I was only. How old would I have been? I was sixteen, I believe, and we saw it in the MGM Grand, which has a cinema inside it. The, playing the, the hotel, or and uh, <laughs> no, you're not allowed anywhere near any sort of gambling things there. They take it very seriously. Um, yeah, we saw the Hangover, and I remember. Um, I went to the toilet after. I feel it's a story I don't really tell enough, to be honest. That's all the hangover in Vegas. Because um, I remember watching the film and you see the MGM Grand. I was like, oh, that's where we are right now. And uh, I remember afterwards, uh, something in the States is the urinals, um, you've got to sort of flush them manually. Or at least those ones you did anyway. Um, and so I had a piss. And like, there was this like 
like an American guy who was like cleaning the toilet and I walked away and he went fucking mad at me. Like he was like, Hey man, why'd you why'd you not flush? And I was like and I'm like going it's a poo <laughs> <laughs> I just went, sorry. <laughs> and I'm like I didn't know. And he flushed it for me and I felt like a right prick and I was like, I'm oh, sorry mate. He was like, Get out of here. I was like, Alright. Sorry, you just missed a spot there. Just piss on the floor. <laughs> Whereas in England we have um, no spray, no lay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some... <laughs> that is a concept that fascinates me. Just... Do you reckon they have them in America? No, no. Maybe, I don't know. What a weird concept that is, that they have... Sorry to go off on a tangent, but I've not thought about it because I've not been in a nightclub for so long. <laughs> I've not lived life. <laughs> no, there's just a random man that offers you aftershave, a chupa chub lolly, and you what he puts soap on your hand he pushes the soap dispenser. yeah but, but I remember I always because every bar in Lee had one didn't they and I always remember that like I have to walk out because I, I, I'm really don't awkward don't make eye contact yeah I'm, all, I'm, I'm really bad with like comfort like so if you've ever met James on a night up at Lee and shook his hand <laughs> I've never watched it how does he piss on you? Yeah, I just I feel because I feel like if he does it, you're obligated to pay him. But you'd always look in his bowl and he'd never have anything in it. But yeah, it's you just know a, why? Yeah, he's pocketed it straight but, away. Mate. Yeah, but I just find it so weird that like because he's been he'll be employed by the the, the, the bar, won't he? And being like, we need someone to employed lad. We need someone to spray after shaving feed out chupa chup lollies to people <laughs> I just find it really unusual yeah but wh- wh- where'd you go from there like, yeah, where'd you find them someone answer me <laughs> these are the lives deepest and yeah, questions I need to oh, I need to do a document what are they, what are they called is there a name for the job toilet supervisor I don't know anyway I'd, we talk about the hangover and we talked about no splashing no gas <laughs> no Dolce Gabbana <laughs> <laughs> no vegana, no banana. <laughs> oh, no, no Armani, no Punani. That's the other one, isn't it? Jesus Christ. Anyway, is that are you going for the hangover? Then is that yeah? Um, it's a toss up between that and, and Mrs. Dell. Depends right? on what day you you've give. got to give an answer. Today, we can't, we can't. today, 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 today. I'd say hangover. Okay, hangover. I'll give you that. Okay, well, Joseph. Sorry for going off about going on a rant there about. No splash, no gash, people. <laughs> and if there is a name for you, please let me know. In fact, if one of you want to come on the podcast, be my guest. Um, you've been a wonderful guest. Thank you once again for letting me in uh, your your nice home. It's not like I'm here all the time. Really. <laughs> More than me. Uh, <laughs> um, it's been emotional, hasn't it? Um, it's been enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, One thing I realise is we need to watch films more. Yeah, together we do. Again. Yeah, we'll go to the, we'll go on a nice. We'll watch The Godfather together. Uh, I'm down, I'm down for we'll that. have a nice steak dinner and watch The Godfather together. Um, I will see you next time. Oh fuck that up, Alan. <laughs> I'll see you on the next episode of Get Your Flicks Out. Bye. Ciao.